coming to the first talk which is work up uh, work up of microbial keratitis and specifically bacterial keratitis i have no financial interests or ex exclusions and i think this is uh, bacterial keratitis uh, that we look at in its most devastating form and uh, symptoms we all are aware of and uh, there is nothing much to it except that there can be redness sensitivity to light which is increased photophobia visual acuity which is decreased pain discharge and associated conjunctivitis now associated conjunctivitis if it is present that means it could be because of gonococci pneumococci or because of hemophilus the risk factors could be ocular such as corneal abrasion or epithelial defect as is shown here eyelid disease contact lens use previous ocular surgery ocular surface disease compromised corneas and inadvertent use of topical antibiotics steroids and traditional eye medicine now uh, risk factors could also be systemic such as use of immunosuppressive drugs burns chronic alcoholism uh, severe malnutrition aids malignancy rheumatoid arthritis and extremes of ages these are just to show how you can have uh, due to the use of traditional eye medicine such as honey uh, microbial keratitis then this is a keratitis after surgery post lasik keratitis and here notice that in these two cases there is excessive thinning and perforation and this has occurred mainly because uh, the concomitant use of topical steroids have happened with the antibiotics so it is important to do a good slit lamp evaluation and look at the area and the density of the infiltration size and depth of the ulceration degree of the stromal edema scleral involvement and anterior chamber reaction if any and it is important to record this at every visit now there is a difference between the size of the epithelial defect and size of the stromal infiltrate so at every visit you have to look at the size of the stromal infiltrate as well as the size of the epithelial defect and monitor it and of course whether the hypopion is fixed or mobile is also important because fixed hypopion uh, is uh, something which is described for fungal keratitis it is important to know the size depth of the ulcer infiltrate extent and the scleral scleral involvement it could be less than 2 2 to 5 or more than 5 millimeters and likewise for the depth in terms of percentage and the infiltrate extent involvement this is because this is going to determine what antibiotics you are going to give now uh, this is just to show uh, risk factors uh, which were evaluated for severe microbial keratitis and ulcers with poor outcome are more likely to be larger involve uh, post cornea after aspergillus species or occur in females this was a study from south india now sometimes you can look at the ulcer and say what it is due to for instance if it is a compromised cornea localized distinct borders but notice that this cornea is quite clear that means it is due to staph but if it is rapidly progressive serpiginous ulcer with desmet membrane folds hypopion deep stromal abscess and the cornea is edematous all around then it is because of pneumococcus pseudomonas on the other hand will have greenish discharge with hypopion diffuse epithelial graying ring ulcer in 48 to 96 hours and desmetoseal or perforation in 2 to 5 days mycobacteria on the other hand has a cracked windshield like appearance as is seen here the surrounding cornea is quite clear and there's hardly any ac reaction now sometimes you can have atypical mycobacterial keratitis also after desec and lasik as is shown here morexella tends to be inferior oval in diabetics and alcoholics and with hardly any ac reaction and nocardia classically has a cracked windshield like uh, effect and also has a wreath like pattern or a flower like pattern as is seen here now at least 3/4 of the times clinical examiners can correctly predict what organism it is but microbiology still remains the mainstay to know what organism it is and of course it is important that you do scrapes which are uh, done from the leading edge and center of the ulcer and classically we like to use a blade for this uh, to do it now if you ask what is the most important stain for a case of microbial keratitis it is koh because that will immediately let you know whether you have to start your antifungal therapy or not however you can do gram stain and acid fast so acid fast is for man and man is mycobacteria ectomyces and nocardia 
Classically, we send cultures for blood agar and chocolate agar, uh, as well as subroge dextrose agar, but in recalcitrant keratitis, you can stand, send for anaerobic blood agar, LJ media, and non-nutrient agar with E. coli. The culture positivity rate for bacteria is 40 to 73 percent, and everything that is associated with it, which includes a contact lens, contact lens solution, case, uh, suture, if it is there, should be sent for culture sensitivity. Now, whenever a case of microbial keratitis comes to you, then the, uh, and the patient is not responding, then you have to look what is the cause. So if the microbiology report is present, then you have to look at the compliance, the resistance of the organism, and to see whether it's a mixed or a polymicrobial uh, entity which is causing it, and you are missing out another organism which may be a part of it. If the microbiology is not available and the ulcer is not responding, then stop antibiotics for 12 hours at least, re-scrape and send for special stains and culture. If it is a twice negative smear case, then you have to do a corneal biopsy. Sometimes you, you may get it after surgery, such as like this, post LK keratitis, then you have to get this infiltrate after removing the suture or post LASIK keratitis, then you have to lift up the flap and then again send it for scrape. At times, it could be a DSEC graft, so little piece from the DSEC graft has to be sent. Or there may be no infiltrate pattern as such, but abscess is there, and because there's no epithelial defect, then you do a short suture biopsy, take a needle with a short suture, pass it through this, and send it for culture and sensitivity. Like I said earlier, corneal biopsy, for at least twice negative cases should be done with no clinical improvement and the tissue is removed en bloc after doing a partial thickness trephination. Now the treatment strategies are fairly simple. Uh, if there are mild ulcers less than 3 millimeters in size not involving the visual axis, it is monotherapy which could be oflox, ciproflox, cataflox, moxiflox and now more lately we are using uh, levoflox 1.5%. But if there are moderate ulcers more than 3 millimeters in size involving the visual axis, you have to start with a combination therapy, which could be cefazolin 5% fortified, with tobramycin 1.3%, uh, or with ciprofloxacin 0.3%, so that it covers for both the gram-positive and the gram-negative organisms. Now, uh, the drops, at least for the initial 48 hours, have to be given round the clock, which means even during the night time. Now, this is just to show that although it is said that the fluoroquinolones will not cause uh, resistance, but off late, we are finding cases where resistance is there. And uh, again, something uh, that is uh, really worrisome uh, is the resistance. And there is a need to look at other drugs and other uh, targets as well. These were the two studies, randomized control study in mild to moderate corneal ulcer, where, uh, which looked at 200 plus patients uh, from our center and where we showed that you could use monotherapy in mild to moderate keratitis. This is how the fortified uh, cafecillin drops are pre prepared and uh, for, uh, fortified tobramycin drops are prepared for severe cases of microbial uh, bacterial keratitis. And likewise, sometimes you may have to uh, use vancomycin in these cases or amikacin or trimethoprim and uh, uh, this is the way we have to prepare it and the concentrations thereof. Now, uh, adjunctive therapy continues in the form of cycloplegics, anti-glaucoma medications and systemic antibiotics were classically indicated for perforations, post-perforation, scleral involvement and Neisseria and haemophilus. The SCUT trial, which was done from the Arvind Eye Hospital, steroids for corneal ulcer trial, did clearly show that non-nucardia keratitis or severe pseudomonas keratitis did better with, with topical steroids. So what did it teach us? It, it taught us that topical steroids may be started uh, provided you have a culture and sensitivity report in hand and loading dose of antibiotics have been given for 48 hours. But they should never be started for FAN, that means fungal keratitis, atypical mycobacteria keratitis, and nocardia keratitis. So if the ulcer is healing, then you do nothing about it. But if it is not healing, then look for other bacteria and other factors, uh, whether these are uh, there or not.
specific antibiotics have to be given for specific organisms. So for MRSA, vancomycin, for severe pseudomonas keratitis, ciftazidine for mycobacteria, fortitum kiloni, amikacin, and likewise for nocardia, amikacin, and trimethoprim can be given. Uh, these are the AO recommendations from 2018, and these are essentially the drugs that we've already talked about. Now, antibiotic resistance is a reality, and if you put it in the PubMed, you see that it is going on increasing, uh, and there is an exponential rise in the recent years. Fluoroquinolone resistance is known, and uh, resistance, these are the several reports where resistance is to these uh, uh, antibacterials is there. So what do, you, what do we do? We can use new combination formulations like topical piperacillin, linozolid, colistin, imipenem, piptas, and uh, increased use of vancomycin when MRSA is suspected. And these are the doses of linozolid, colistin, and imipenem uh, which can be given. Uh, a single case report of topical colistin which, uh, which led to the... Uh, healing of uh, bacterial keratitis and it, the method of preparation is uh, shown here and likewise piperacillin can be used. Now there are newer fungal, newer fluoroquinolone treatments which are available uh, and these are the ones but none that are commercially available. Uh, I would just like to talk about uh, levofloxacin 1.5 percent which is commercially available, which is concentrated and which has a stronger potency. So you don't have to uh, make it in your ocular pharmacy. Uh, pharmacy. Now this uh, significantly uh, reduces the colony counts and especially the pseudomonas. And this is of course a single case report, but we have an ongoing study uh, on combination therapy versus uh, levofloxacin in cases of microbial keratitis, again, uh, mild to moderate. And uh, this is with uh, LVPI, both the, both the centers are in collaboration for this. So how do you prevent resistance? Don't use, don't taper the antibiotics. You have to stop it short. I mean, once it is healed, then you have to just stop it. You cannot, you know, give it four times a day and then three times a day and then two times a day and once a day because that is going to cause resistance. So don't use sub-therapeutic dose, use the curative dose. Then using the right, right antibiotic is important and use of, uh, use of antibiotics when proved to be, use it only when it is useful, don't use it uh, just as a prophylactic therapy. Now, a uh, word about packed C CXL uh, or collagen cross-linking for infectious keratitis. Uh, this has also been tried with the, uh, with the Rose Bengal dye. But uh, as of now, uh, th there is no real role of uh, collagen cross-linking in microbial keratitis. At least uh, this is the meta-analysis which shows that there is insufficient evidence uh, for the same. Uh, just to conclude, I would like to talk about deep learning algorithms for diagnosing bacterial keratitis via the external eye photographs. And I think AI is something or artificial intelligence is something that is uh, going to uh, going to rather say shouldn't say uh, rule us, but going to guide us uh, in the diagnosis of uh, keratitis. So it is important to rewind, reevaluate, and redefine our approach, especially when uh, resistance is there. And these are the sequel complications which can uh, occur if not treated well. But this should be the healing of a bacterial keratitis if treated well, and this is what we should look for with hardly any haze and hardly any vascularization. So this is our book on corneal ulcers, the second edition of which is going to be out soon. And thank you very much for your kind attention.